What's up everybody, this is Parallax Abstraction and welcome to Retro Flash Forward, showcasing gaming's roots in the current generation. So we're taking a look at another interesting thing that randomly appeared on Steam a little while ago. This is Castle in the Darkness, which came out on February 5th, 2015. And this is kind of interesting. This is a one-man production. This is made by a gentleman from the Ukraine called Matt Cap who did, as I understand it, literally everything with this game. Graphics, programming, design, animation, even the music, everything, which is pretty cool. He lists on his Twitter bio as being a pixel artist with Nicalis, which is an interesting small indie publisher that has put out a lot of retro-inspired games, in addition to having what is possibly one of the coolest websites ever known to man. Seriously, go to Nicalis.com and check it out. It is friggin' cool. Um, and yeah, they, uh, they put this game out and it's pretty interesting. It is listed on its website as being a throwback to, well, like the NES era video games. This is a, a um, side-scrolling action platformer title with a little bit of RPG elements in it here and there that looks and sounds like something you would have found on the NES. So that sounds pretty cool, right? Right up my alley and the kind of thing we should definitely talk about here. Yeah, so I've played a decent piece of this, and I don't know if this is for me to be honest with you, and that kind of pains me to say, because this sounds like something I should really dig. But the Steam reviews on this are very positive, and this is clearly designed, like a lot of the titles I cover on Retro Flash Forward, for a very specific crowd. And you may very well fit in that crowd, because I seem to be in the minority with my opinion on this game. But I'm going to show it off to you here, and you can decide. So... You'll get an idea here very quick what we're looking at. So, yeah, there's basically only two buttons for this. You got your jump, and you got your attack. And you see up there, there's your health and your gold. You earn gold by killing monsters. <laughs> or saving civilians, as it were. And uh, you can use the gold at various points in the game to buy higher zoot uh, weapons and things like that that you equip to yourself, and which will help you along in your journey. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Something we've seen a lot of. Yeah, it, 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 it's not necessarily a groundbreaking formula. But I don't mind that. Not every game has to be innovative, and I like games that do things... So here's a save point here. And as you can see, you, when you're at a save point, you can. this is also where you equip stuff. So I see I've only got the one sword, obviously. Whoops, that took me out of the menu. Um, but you can see here, we've got... So there's not much in here right now, but you can get stuff along the way that helps you out. And you see people talking at you here. Oh, lady, what are you... Jeez. So here's another thing that we're going to show you here. So there's plenty of boss fights in this game. And so you see how much health was knocked off me there by that one hit? Yeah, this game... <laughs> Yeah, you also see there, there's a death counter. This is kind of funny, because I started a new file, but it says I've died 11 times. That actually uh, goes back to my previous save, which is kind of funny, so I guess it remembers that globally. Yeah, this game, like a lot of old school games of this type, is rock hard. Um, this game doesn't screw around. The enemies do a lot of damage. Your guy, at least at this early stage of the game, cannot absorb a lot of damage. And while the checkpoints are not... They're not ungenerous, that's not even a word I don't think, but the checkpoints in this game are are not ridiculous, it's not frugal with them. You can definitely, uh, now you see, uh, that looks like something that should make this a lot easier, right? Yeah, that gives you one little tick on your life meter, and given that you lose about a third of your life per hit, it's not necessarily the biggest uh, thing you might, you might ever see. And you see here, there's some little platforming challenges with things like breaking blocks and, and things like that. Uh, but yeah, this game is very hard, and apparently as it, I some of the later levels in this just get absolutely punishing. Um, but again, this game has no pretensions of being something other than that. It's... The, the guy who, who made this clearly understood... Oh, that's where I just was, wasn't I? <laughs> The guy who made this clearly knew what he wanted to make and knew what he was going for, and that's who this is being sold for. It's it like a lot of these retro-inspired titles that we we talk about on Retro Flash 4. This is a niche game for a niche audience, and it was presumably designed with 
a niche mentality in mind, you know, a modest budget, and obviously it was only made by one dude. Uh, so it, it's clearly made... Now, I do know a little thing here. There is an ability to buy a sword for 100 gold uh, in this area. And as you can see, it is actually possible to grind in this game because enemies respawn uh, when you uh, leave the screen and come back. Another old school trait. And that's something you're going to want to utilize in spots because certain things get much easier with some of the gear you can buy. And I don't know how expensive this stuff gets overall. Probably, some of it can probably get pretty crazy, but uh, this first sword is only 100 gold, which isn't too bad. You see we're most of the way there already, so we're gonna, I'm gonna do that just because it makes this a little easier, this next fight we have coming up. Um, and yeah, this game is, it is, it is, it does not screw around. It is not an easy game. Uh, it, it demands a lot. It demands a lot of precision. It demands a lot of quick thinking, quick reflexes. And it will punish you if you screw that up. Uh, you know what? Let's stay at the end and see what this is like. Well, there's some, uh... Also old school design, so I'm healed up. I'm a few gold short now of my sword, but that'll be easy to take care of. As you can see here, it's got a very simplistic... Uh, I don't know if I'd call this an 8-bit art style. It's mostly 8-bit. There was no such thing as 12-bit, but that's almost what I'd call it, because it seems... It, it, it seem, feels to me like it's straddling the line between... Ah, so here's the blacksmith. It feels to me like it's, it's straddling the line between... There we go, so we equipped it. So you see, we got a much bigger sword now. It's called the wrong sword. Believe me, it is not. So let's go check it out here. Right or wrong, it's still an improvement. Right you are, video game. So it was already equipped. You can equip stuff right when you buy it, which is nice and convenient. Uh, yeah, the, the, the music is definitely 8-bit, uh, but the visual aesthetic feels somewhere in the middle. This is why we want that sword. Because this guy... He's mean with his dagger throws, and you can only hit him in the head. Which can be rather tricky if you have a short sword. Hey, I got him on the first try. I rarely do that. So we got the key, which gets us in the museum. So you see there's a little bit of variety in the environments here and stuff, which is kind of cool. Oh, ho, oh, what is this? The Ares Gauntlet. Alright. Gotta get to a save point to equip that. So, there's a little bit of uh, variety in the environments here. It does have that, the, you know, somewhat simplistic color palette that you would find on an older system, which is nice. It's adhering to that idea, but it does mix the variety, the, the variety in the environments up a little bit, so you're not necessarily always looking at this. What's this? Oh, yes, do not enter the sewer pipes. Spoiler, you go in there, you die. It's a little, it's making fun of uh, Mario sewer pipes. And as you can see, there's definitely some homages going on here, like this guy. This boss actually isn't that hard. He's pretty... His, his attacks don't do that much to you. But as you can see here, this is pretty clearly an homage to Bubble Bobble, which is a game uh, we have actually not covered on this channel, but I will at some point soon. It's a, a really good old-school arcade game. This is one of the characters from that, pretty clearly. This guy knows where... His inspiration is coming from, and uh, he wears that on his sleeve, which I, I respect a lot. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I think that, that sort of things like that are kind of cute. Um, but you're sort of looking at the meat of this game, to be honest with you. I mean, I haven't gotten super far in it yet. I, I've played a decent chunk in. Uh, I, I Well, I think. To be honest, I don't know how long it is. My, my old save I played for quite a while, and yet it said it was... Uh, I think 4% or something like that. So I don't know how long this actually is. The This game may be fairly heavy on content. So you see here now we're in another area where we've actually got multiple locations we can go um, within the area. And there's various platforming challenges like those spinning gears and crates you can push. And all sorts of things like that that sort of really... There we go. That it sort of do things... So it's making it a, as much a platformer as a combat game. Uh, it's it's almost it's almost like a weird 
I don't even know if this describes it well, but this is almost... Oh, jeez. This is almost like a weird blending of, like, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link and Mega Man, sort of. It's kind of got the Mega Man challenge platforming, though it's faster than Mega Man. And it's kind of like Zelda 2 Adventure of Link, but even then, that's not really accurate, because that game kind of had an overworld and uh, things like that. So that's not really a, a good way to describe this either, I suppose, but... So, also, I am playing with an Xbox 360 controller right now. This game... Damn it. This game can be played with the keyboard. Uh, works... Works fine. Uh, I, I don't think it's a, it's a huge problem. Uh, out of the box, it does not come uh, configured to work with the Xbox 360 controller, so you're going to have to set your button bindings manually, but it's not exactly difficult. It's, <laughs> you know, the D-pad, jump, and attack. That's basically it. It's you know, it's not exactly uh, rocket science to get the controller set up. And the nice thing about that is you can set up anything you want. So you want to use an Xbox 360 pad? Cool. You want to use a uh, PlayStation 4 DualShock? Can do that too. You want to suck at things huge like I am right now? You can do that too. So you have uh, a lot of freedom in that respect. This isn't a game that's going to hamstring you to uh, using an Xbox 360 controller or the keyboard, which a lot of other games do. So that's pretty cool. So what... I said that I was kind of meh on this. So why is that? Well... I, I, you know, when you're... As, a, as someone who's supposed to be critiquing a product, you're really... What killed me there? I don't even know. You're not really supposed to feel guilty about not liking a game, right? But... My problem with this is that this game... As I said, I think it's going to appeal to a certain crowd, and it clearly has a, a, a big group of people who like it. But speaking purely for myself, my main problem with it is that it just feels a little too... Uh, I guess a little too plain is the word to describe it. I'm bad with vocabulary today. It Plain kind of feels like the, the best way to describe it. It just feels... You know, it, it's got the mechanics down. It's got the platforming down. It's got the combat down. It's got the rock hard difficulty down, which is something that I will say that that will be a turn off for some people. This game has no, it makes. No, oh, that's what killed me. This game makes no pretensions about what it is or, in particular, how hard it is. It knows it's really, really hard, and it wears that on its sleeve. It, this this game is not for people who want a cakewalk. And I respect that. I like any game that's willing to do that, especially in this day and age when games seem to be getting more and more dumbed down by the day and we have people like, you know, EA executives saying our games are too easy, which makes me want to punch them in the throat. Um, and here we have our little homage to the Castlevania Medusa heads. But it just doesn't feel like it's doing anything particularly interesting to me. The story... He clearly tacked one on just so that there would be one, but the story, at least that I've experienced so far, is very uninteresting. This music that's playing in the background, as cool as it is as a chip tune, it's the only in-level tune I've heard in the entire game. And I've played through, you know, a decent number of levels and whatnot. Now, it's quite possible I haven't played far enough and it does change, but it... I swear to God, I was trying to avoid that. But it's it's extremely repetitive, and just hearing it over and over again, it starts to grind on me after a while. Um, doesn't feel like there's a lot of variety in that. The levels look cool, but as you've probably seen for a lot of them, at least to this point, it's very brown, <laughs> which is... You know, a common complaint amongst a lot of modern AAA games is that, oh god, why is everything so brown? And this definitely looks that way too. Again, there, there, we have seen more variety than that, so that's a bit of a petty complaint. Truth be told, I don't really care if it's brown as long as it's good. But, and it is a rock hard game, and I don't necessarily mind games like that, but ones like this just feel, there we go. I don't know. The the way this game plays, I'm just not finding super entertaining for me personally. Locked by clock? I don't know what that means. I guess we have to go back to where we were. That's a bummer. 
Yeah, I don't know. This just doesn't feel... The, 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 the best way I can describe it is that this game just feels very plain to me. And it, it, it just... I mean, it is a game that was made by one person, clearly on a small budget, and that's cool and admirable. I just think that there are potentially better options if you're looking for a game like this. There are plenty of rock-hard platformers out there, and there are other ones that have potentially more interesting stories, a greater variety in level and music, uh... And just a bit more interesting gameplay design. I don't know. It, it just feels to me like... Um, it's cool that this is was one guy's passion project, but it also feels to me like... It just could, could have maybe been more than it ended up being. Um, but like I said, that's just my opinion, and... This game clearly has a, a lot of following. Its Steam reviews are, are overwhelmingly positive, so maybe this just doesn't click with me sp yeah, specifically. And that's quite possible, you know. I, I'm rather famous for, for having a contrarian view on uh, a lot of things. And it's not bad. Like, I can, I can look at this and see that it's well-crafted. I can see that Matt Cap clearly is a talented person. I mean, anyone who can make a fully functional video game with all the various types of things that entails as one person is a person who deserves, frankly, mega kudos. Uh, timing, man. Timing. Uh, and he, he certainly did that, and that is pretty impressive. Um, but that still doesn't necessarily mean a, a product's going to click with, click with me or should based purely on that alone. And I don't know. I... I played a lot of games of this ilk back in the day, and I liked them. Uh, I didn't mind Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. I played a lot of games like Faxanadu, uh, which I enjoyed at the time. Uh, you can even see, you know, potentially some elements of older school Final Fantasy titles in here. Um, or any other number of games like that. And I can certainly see what the appeal is. Just something about this particular one doesn't grab me quite the way um, a lot of games like that do. This is something that, if I were to sit down and finish it, I, I probably wouldn't be able to finish it because it would frustrate me too much. Yeah, we made it through here. Because I like games that are... I, I don't mind games that are challenging, but games like this where you can often fail just do... Uh, here's another boss. Uh, games like this where you can fail just due to frustrating uh, timing requirements, as you've seen many times in this video. That type, of, that type of challenge doesn't resonate with me necessarily. I tend to find that frustrating. That's why, while I respect games like Super Meat Boy and things like that, I tend to not play those games very much because I'm terrible at them. Nicalis also recently put out another game, which is admittedly way harder than this, called 1001 Spikes. Uh, that was uh, very similar, relied on a lot of the same Twitch gameplay requirements and things like that. And games like that, like I said, I respect them. I respect the hell out of anybody who's good at them, but they're pretty, they're not for me. Uh, and I think this is probably the same idea. Not to that level of extreme, but it's, it's definitely in that, uh, in that ballpark. So what I would say is that if the, you're the type of person who's into this type of game and there's there's a decent sized crowd of those types of people out there, then you may like this. If the mechanical design and the challenge are the most important things to you over things like story and uh, deep characters and dialogue and things like that, then you might very well enjoy this game. Um, if you're someone who likes games like this Obviously, to have good gameplay, but is more interesting, more interested in being put into a, a, an interesting and unique world and having a, a fun story experience with cool characters and the like, then this may not do it for you. That, if I had to choose, I would say that's probably where my preferences lie. And 
that's not really what this game is. This game is designed more to be mechanically challenging and to have and to take to do that in kind of an interesting world, but it's about those mechanics first. Whoops. Ah, there's the clock tower key. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, with it being more mechanics first and uh, challenge first. Uh, but that's not really what I look for. So, this doesn't necessarily do it for me, but it may very well do it for you. And uh, if this is the type of game, if that's the type of game you're into, you probably dig this. And you know what? It's not even that hard to find out. This game is, it's 650 Canadian. And our dollar is kind of in the crapper right now, so I think it's probably more like five bucks or five fifty U.S. or maybe six bucks, something like that. I any way you slice it, it's cheap. Uh, so if you wanna, if you think this might interest you, you don't have a lot to lose uh, to buy it and try it for yourself. Um, so I will say it gets it gets my recommendation, but once again, you've gotta you've gotta know what you. Yes, made it. But once again, you've got to know what you want. I've actually never been here, I don't think. Or have I? This kind of looks familiar, but I'm not sure. Aha! Armor? Yes, I'll take that chainmail. That will probably help some. Oh dear. That's a pretty cool looking owl. And this guy plays a lot like a Mega Man boss. Now, as you can see, I am taking a lot less damage with that chainmail now. Certainly not none. Uh, this is still... This has not suddenly become the win button. But it's definitely uh, less rough than it was. Well, maybe, let's see if I can get him. This would be a good way to end. I don't know what he's doing there. Come here, you. Come on. Nice. Got him. Well, there we go. First time out with that boss. Oh, he took off. First time with that boss in spite of the fact that I was just railing on the difficulty. And I can't go to the right. Well, there you go. So, yeah. This, uh... This game is cool. And it gets my tentative recommendation. But, like I said, you just gotta know... Know what you're getting into. Try to suck less than I do. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you might you might find something cool here. And it's cheap, so so give it a try. And you know what? There's a lot of games out there made by single people, and they're all cool that they exist. But there's quite a number of them that are not made as well as this one. And this is a game that, whether or not it's up my alley is clearly made with a lot of craft and I can always respect that so yeah uh, check it out if you think this interests you check it out if this is the type of game you're not into this one will probably not sell you on it so yeah that is Castle in the Darkness developed by Matt Cap and published by Nicalis this is on Steam right now which I think is uh, I think PC is the only place you can get it uh, it is, well, 650 Canadian, so, or your regional equivalent, I guess, as Total Biscuit might say, or something like that. Yeah, if you like, uh, if you like rock hard platformers with a bit of a fantasy setting, take a look at it. If you don't, like I said, probably won't sell you on it. My name is from Parallax Abstraction. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It does help me out a great deal. And I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.